So we're going to draw the Lewis structure for oxalate. Um, so it's C2O4, negative 2. You've got to do your valence thing. The easiest way to screw this up is to count the valence number of electrons wrong. I mean, uh, every, almost every kid that's had an issue so far today, they did the valence wrong. So just make sure you're doing that right. So it's 4 times 2 because you've got 4 for carbon, you've got 2 of them, plus how many valence electrons does oxygen have? 6, and you've got 4 of them. Then you've got your negative 2 there, so you add 2 more, because remember you do the opposite. That's a grand total of, what, 34? Is it 34? It's 34. I've done this problem four times in a row. So, the next step. You got C2O4. This is the part where some of you probably struggle. So, a simple, easy hint is connect the carbons. Always connect the carbons. Always put them in the middle. Now, the next goal is to organize the, the oxygens in such a way that they're as far apart from each other as possible. So some of you might want to draw it like this, where you put an oxygen like that, and maybe something like that. Now, at this moment, you're probably going to think there's nothing wrong with that. It looks a little weird, but the reason that that is wrong is because you see how the oxygens are really close together there when they could be spread further apart? when you could move this oxygen or one of these over to here and move it farther away from the carbon, stop. Pay attention. Um, the reason you do that is because there's a lot of electrons on these oxygens. They want to be as far apart as possible. Compounds form to, be, to, to have as much space as possible. Just like you guys like space, they like space. So the actual structure would have oxygens spread out like that. Notice that they're further apart here than this than this incorrect structure. If you were to like put these two up here, fine. That that is no difference actually. Because again, this is not the actual arrangement of these bonds. The way it actually arranges, and I'll show you again later. Yeah, that's how it actually looks. You see how what it does, it just it just makes it so that they're as far physically apart as possible. That's the way they actually arrange. This just makes it easier for us to do when we're like, when you know, you're learning it. So anyway, um, we've got our carbons. Now, how many electrons did I just put in? Two, four, six, eight, ten. So you do 34 minus 10, 24 electrons left over. So you keep going now. Your next goal is to say, all right, I've got a bunch of oxygens. Let's fill them in. So you go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Okay, so I just put in 24 electrons. That's it. Now, what do I do from here? Yes? Make a double bond. So you should make a double bond. Why? So that carbon has eight. Yes. So carbon has six electrons here. You count it, two, four, six, two, four, six. They all have six. That's bad. The oxygens have eight, but the carbons have six. We must fix that. So what you do, now to answer the question that somebody's going to have, you could pick an electron from any of these, okay, from any of them. I'm just going to pick this one, whatever. And I'm going to say we're going to form a bond right there. So you'll end up with this. Yeah, but why can't you see it on the bond? Hang on. I'll show you. So, the reason we can't leave it on the oxygen, like why do we have to move it to the carbon, is because we have to take those electrons and physically stick them in between the oxygen and the carbon, because now this oxygen has eight, it still has eight, it still has, you know, eight total. But now this carbon is sharing those electrons, so it has eight now too. That's why, because if you left them there, carbon doesn't have eight. Are you are you saying why don't we just draw a bond there and leave no, the I'm electrons? Why, why do we even intend to draw a bond? Be, because carbon needs eight. It's only got six. So if, if on something I didn't draw an extra bond there, are we wrong? Yes, because that because then you would not have everything with a filled octet shell, and that's the important part. Yeah. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. You just ask a question. Okay. 
So yeah, now you still got to do the other one, obviously, because this carbon has six, not eight. So you take, I'm just going to pick this again. It doesn't matter which pair you pick. You can do it with any of them. So you form that bond there. And you're going to keep going here. So you'll do C to C. Now over here you've got your double bond still. Over here you've got oxygen. What? Just I want to show you step by step. Yeah, I mean if I was just, I would have just drawn this out normally if I was just doing it myself. I just want you to see how you do this step by step there. So now, if you compare, you've got 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, everything's got 8. It's cool. Isn't it technically carbon just here in one of those ones? What do you mean? The one, the one in the middle. The one in the middle, yeah, it's shared between both of them, but it, it's still two electrons counting for both of them. So, you know, yeah, yeah. So all elements have to have the same amount of electrons? They, they all want to have 8 outer electrons, except... Hydrogen wants to. Don't forget the hydrogen thing. No, hydrogen wants to. Boron can have a, an incomplete shell and only have six. But don't worry about that right now. Yes, that's why. <laughs>